Ni hao. Another greeting for you. This time we're going Mandarin. I can hear you. Ruffle. Anyway, welcome to the second of two podcasts on eukaryote gene control. And in this podcast, what we're going to do is look at how an actual particular example of genes being controlled in a eukaryote. So without further ado, let's get down to business. So looking at your screens right now, you can see the beautiful New Zealand Christmas tree, otherwise known as the Pahutakawa tree. And this is a good example of a eukaryotic or a eukaryote organism. So all those things we've been talking about, eukaryote cells, having a proper nucleus and things like that, the Pahutakawa tree is an example of an organism that has cells that have a proper nucleus, that have introns in their DNA, and all the other characteristics of eukaryote cells. Now I chose to use a plant for this purpose um, because I wanted to sort of ex basically talk about the fact that plants are eukaryotes and I also thought it would be good because we talked about um, hormones and things like that in plants and controlling plants in our last topic so I thought that would link in quite well and we can see how say for example genetics and animal behavior uh, plant responses actually link together. So I want to just do a quick recap of something, and I want you to obviously look at, you're looking at the plant right now on the screen hopefully, and you can see that it's got the big red flowers out. So just have a think for a second, pause me, and just try and remember what actually is the mechanism that controls whether a plant flowers or not, at what particular time of year it flowers. The word you're thinking of is photoperiodism, but what's that? Well hopefully you remembered that it's all about the period or the length of the day, or more importantly the length of the dark period that the plant's actually experiencing at any particular time. And it's got to do with phytochromes, but we're not going to go into that right now. But basically, after a particular length of a dark period, you've got different levels of phytochromes within the cell, within the leaf, and that somehow sends a message to the buds to tell them that it's a good time to flower. And if you remember right, we actually talked about a hormone being involved in this, and that was basically the message getting from the leaves to the buds was through a, a hormone that is basically never been extracted, but it's a, what we call a hypothetical hormone. We think it's there, and we've given it the name Florigen. So today I want to talk about Florigen and how that actually is involved with controlling genes. So let's say that the night length has got so short, because if we remember right, the Pahudakawa tree is a plant that's a long day plant, so that means it flowers when the nights are short. So let's say when the nights get so short, that it basically detects that that's the right time of year to flower and the leaves start sending out the hormone Florigen. So we've now got Florigen moving throughout the plant. Now just having a quick another look at the picture on the screen that, or imagining of a tree, we can already think about the fact that the cells within the tree are specialized. So we've obviously got different cells in the flower to the cells in the trunk to the cells in the roots and so on. However, all those other cells might look different and might be specialized, so they might have different jobs, they've all got the same DNA, they've all got the same genes there. The difference is that some genes are turned off and some genes are turned on. Now if you imagine a Pudakawa tree before it flowered, obviously there's different genes turned off that all ultimately will be turned on when the, the tree actually begins to flower. And that's where Florigen comes into this. So we've got these lots of different cells within the tree and some of those cells are sensitive to this hormone Florigen. The roots aren't sensitive to it, the leaves aren't sensitive to it, but the cells that actually ultimately are going to be creating the flower definitely are sensitive to it. And they're sensitive to it because they've actually got specialized receptors. They actually, those cells in the flower, or where the flower will be, have actually got specialized receptors that actually are only receptive to hormones like Florigen and so on. The cells in the roots they don't have the same receptor so they can't detect the presence of Florigen. So Florigen has been released by the leaf and those specialized cells near the flower or where the flower will be detect the presence of Florigen because they've got special receptors on their membranes. And those receptors are actually made of protein. Now, when the hormone actually binds to those receptors it actually forms a transcription factor. Now if you look at the screen again now we've got the picture there of the eukaryote gene with the promoter and the enhancer regions of the transcription factors there and RNA polymerase. So we've got Florigen binding to the hormone receptor, the specialized receptor of this cell and that complex, that combination of the hormone and the receptor protein actually forms a transcription factor which then would bind to the enhancer and it would bind to the enhancer of the genes or the gene that was involved in 
initiating flowering. Or at least that's the theory. So then obviously the other transcription factors that bind to the RNA polymerase and to the promoter region would happen. We'd get, as you've seen on your screen right now, the hairpin loop forming. And as soon as the promoter and the enhancer regions come into contact, transcription can start taking place and RNA polymerase will move along and begin transcribing the genes. And that means that genes that are involved in flowering are only transcribed when fluorogen is produced. And when there's no more fluorogen actually being detected by those specialized receptors at the membrane, then there's no transcription factors being formed. So the transcription factors aren't able to bind to the enhancers anymore, and that, trans that uh, transcription will then be turned off. So that's a simple way of looking at how a gene can be turned on or off dependent on its environment. And of course, when we think about plants, there's lots of different hormones that cause lots of different things, such as leaf dropping and falling off, and all the other things that we talked about when we did plant responses. And they will basically have those effects on those specialized cells in a very similar way to the effect that we just talked about with fluorogen and how that might be involved with initiating flowering. And that's exactly the same with humans. If you think about a hormone such as adrenaline, so under certain conditions, the adrenal gland will release adrenaline. Adrenaline and that adrenaline will be carried through the body and certain parts of the body will actually have a response to that adrenaline. So for example, heart rate increases and we sometimes maybe sweat more or maybe even become a little bit more alert. And those responses are possibly to do with an interaction between the hormone and those specialized receptors on certain cells within the body that then become transcription factors and initiate gene, sorry, gene transcription of particular genes. When the adrenaline is no longer produced, those transcription factors aren't produced anymore, so those responses, they basically stop happening. Now, transcription control or gene control in eukaryotes is a little bit more complicated than prokaryotes for obvious reasons. That obviously, we've not got the operon, so the genes involved in one particular process aren't located in the same place. But there's also another reason as well. And the main reason for that is just because of these transcription factors. And different cells have different transcription factors in them that mean different cells look different, respond differently, and all kinds of other things as well. So it's the actual presence of specific transcript, transcription factors for specific genes. So, for example, the transcription factor that would be involved in turning on flowering would only be present in the cells where flowering is actually important. And they wouldn't be, for example, present. Those tra same transcription factors wouldn't be found in the cells within the root and so on. So it's very, very specific to different cells of the eukaryote as to whether gene transcription can actually take place or not. Well, I'm going to leave it there. Reasonably short one, this one. I hope it's been useful. Um, remember, as you're going through these podcasts, if you're getting to things you don't understand, pause them. Take a second to have a think about it. Think about what questions you need to ask that will actually help you understand it better. And please post those questions on the wiki space because I guarantee if you're thinking it, other people are thinking it too. I can see which questions that you're asking so I can sort of figure out what I need to go through in class. And um, you guys answering each other's questions is a really valuable learning experience for, for yourselves as well. So anyway, I'll leave it at that and I'll say goodbye. And as usual, keep it real.